in his presence. Why not lift up your voice and begin to magnify the name of the Lord? Let's give him all the glory that is due to his name. Let's adore him. Let's come before him. We sing him. Oh, Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. We exalt you. God of all possibilities, thank you for making it possible for us to be here tonight. Thank you, Father. They go from strength to strength every one of them that appear before the Lord in Mount Zion. Let's lift up our voice and give thanks to God for another privilege that he has given us to go from strength to strength. One thing we are sure of that after tonight's travel we are going from strength to strength. Why not go ahead and give God all the glory that Lord I am set tonight. I am set tonight. I am set tonight. Lord I am set tonight night for a moment of travel. Lord, I am set tonight, O oh God. Lift your voice wherever you are. Make sure you're saying something to God. Make sure you're saying something to God. Say something to your maker. Say something to God that hears and answers prayers. Father, we just honor you. We just exalt you. We just worship you because you are great. There is no one like you. There is none that can be compared to you. Faithful Father, we worship you. Faithful Father, we adore you. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. Giver of life, be thou glorified. Oh Lord, the one that has fought all our battles, the one that we know, the one we, do, we didn't even know. Thank you, Father. The one that have made us spectators and have delivered the trophies into our hands. Why not lift your voice and give him all the glory. Father, we exalt you. We magnify you. We magnify you. Thank you for this time in your presence. Thank you for this time in your presence. The Bible says in the presence of God is fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. We have come into his presence, a place where we are guaranteed it does the level of joy you are coming with we are guaranteed that we are living this place with a higher dimension of joy let's give him all the glory lord thank you thank you jesus for the pleasures that will be conducting in your presence the pleasures of god is what terminates the pleasures of life we are in his presence where every pressure will be converted to testimony father we thank you we give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. 
In the book of Psalms chapter 72 and verse 18, the Bible says, Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only does wondrous things. The God of Israel, who only does wondrous things. Hallelujah. Our God is known, among other things, as God that does wondrous things. Has he done any wondrous things in your life? Has he wrought any wonder in your life? In case you don't know any wonder that God has wrought, at least you are still alive. Your voice can still be heard. Can you go ahead and give him all the glory for the wonder that he has wrought? He has kept you alive. He has kept every member of your family alive. Lord, I I give you all the glory. Blessed be God that does only wondrous things. Though we walk through the valley and the shadow of death, the Bible says we shall fear no evil. We have seen the wondrous acts of God in our lives. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we bless you. We have seen the wondrous acts of God in the lives of every member of our families. Lord, we glorify your name. Father, we glorify your name. We exalt you, ancient of days. We exalt you, ancient of days. We adore you faithful father we adore you faithful father thank you i am that i am in the mighty name of jesus christ we have prayed in the book of john chapter 10 and verse number 12 the bible speaking he said thou hast granted me life and favor he said thy visitation has preserved my spirit thou hast granted me life hallelujah so minus god we have no life god is the one that granted you life God is the one that granted me life. Let's go ahead and give him all the glory. His visitation has preserved our lives. Oh God, we thank you. Your visitation has preserved our lives. Father, we give you glory. Your visitation has preserved our lives. Ancient of days be thou adored. Ancient of days be thou magnified. Your visitation has preserved our lives. Your visitation has preserved our lives. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Oh, Kaba Zeke Ketala, bro. If you know and you know that it is the visitation of God in the midst of this global pandemic, that it is his visitation that has preserved your life, please make your voice be heard. Let's give him all the glory. Let's exalt his name. Let's magnify him. He is worthy of all our praise. He is worthy of all our worship. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, blessed Redeemer, in the name of Jesus Christ. People of God, I know exactly why we are taking time to give thanks to God. Only those who give thanks to God are guaranteed to cross over. Hallelujah. That's why I am taking us through this session of thanksgiving. Give thanks to God from the depth of your heart. Lord, I thank you for my children. I thank you for my business. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. The Bible says the righteous shall give thanks and they shall dwell in his presence. You have no right to enjoy the presence of God in your life except you are a thanksgiver. Lord, I give you all the glory. I exalt your name. Thank you and thank you. Thank you for my health, stability of our health, stability of the health of every member of our families. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have given thanks. I have no doubt there are quite a number of people that God has ordained to be part of this meeting. I want us to begin to call them forth. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, that shall call a nation that knoweth not thee, and the nation that knows thee not shall come to thee, because the Lord thy God has glorified thee. Let's go ahead and begin to call them forth. Wherever they are, let them begin to come online. Let them begin to come online. Their gadgets will not fail them. Their guardian will not disappoint them. Let's go ahead and pray that, Father, nothing will disappoint them. Nothing will disappoint them. There shall be clear connectivity. We will flow together. We will flow together. We will connect together. We will flow together. Thank you, Father. Wherever they are, Lord, we call them forth. We call them forth. We call them forth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Let's go ahead and plead the blood of Jesus over tonight's meeting. The blood of Jesus that speaketh better things. He said, In Hebrew, ye have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the country of innumerable angels. He said, You have come to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Let's go ahead and begin to sprinkle.
the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus over tonight's meeting, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus that speaks better things, the blood of Jesus that speaks better things. Let the blood of Jesus speak better things in tonight's meeting. Let the blood of Jesus speak deliverance. Let the blood of Jesus speak favor. Let the blood of Jesus speak direction. The blood of Jesus. Begin to cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Cover yourself that as you go into the session of prayer, you take cover in the blood of Jesus. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. I cover everyone that is viewing right now with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. I want us to go ahead and give glory to God because the Lord has heard our prayers. He has received our thanksgiving. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We bless you. We glorify you. Thank you, covenant keeping God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have given thanks. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So how are you doing? I'm sure you're doing great. I'm sure you've been kept by the Lord. I'm sure God has helped you to win every battle over this season. Hallelujah. I'm so excited tonight and privileged by God to come your way and bring the word of God, especially in uh, tonight's Travel of Hannah Interdenominational Women Prayer Service. I want to assure you that this night is your night. I want to assure you that God will minister to you and God will meet you at the very point of your need in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As our tradition is, I always love bringing the word of life before we go fully into the session of prayer. And the reason why we do this over and over, so that we'll be able to stir up our spirit man and get prepared to go into the time of prayer. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'll be sharing on the same topic that I began last week. Last week, God privileged me to share on the topic stay alert. I would quickly like to continue with part two of the same topic. So I'm sharing on stay alert part two. Hallelujah. Our scriptural text still remains as Thessalonians chapter five and verse number six. I read the New Living Translation. It says, so be on your guard not asleep like the others. Stay alert and be sober. He said, stay on your guard. Do not be asleep like others because there is something distinct about your person. Stay alert. Have a clear mind. Be sober. Do not allow yourself to slumber like others because you are not like them there is something spectacular about your person and like i said last week that when it comes to the spiritual alertness of a believer it is not something that can be overemphasized i said it precisely last week it is not something that one should compromise it is not something that you should joke around with it is not something that you should play around with. Praise the Lord. And we went for that to define what to stay alert means. To stay alert means to stay watchful. To stay watchful for possi possible danger. To be on vigil. To stay alert means to be awake in the spirit. To be quickened and be sensitive in the spirit is to be vigilant hallelujah i want us to understand that by virtue of the assignment of god upon your life and upon my life there are certain demands that are placed on our lives when you look at your life as a child of god when you look at your life as a woman of god when you look at your life generally as a believer you must understand that by virtue of the divine assignment of God upon our lives, there are certain demands that are placed on us. 
And I discovered that one of such demand that is placed on us in order to fulfill the divine assignment of God upon our life is the demand to stay alert. It is a demand. And the scripture in the book of Isaiah chapter 43 verse 21 began giving a description of our person. He said, these people have I formed for myself. Isaiah 43, 21 gave a description of you. It gave a description of my person as personalities of people that God formed for himself. Hallelujah. So God has the prerogative to be able to deploy every one of us where there is need for workforce. If you say something is meant for you, you have right to take it to wherever you want, you have right to use it for whatsoever you want to use it for. For example, this handkerchief is my own. Among all my handkerchiefs, I decided to pick this handkerchief tonight. I have right over it. It didn't remain in my drawer. I picked it because there is an assignment that this handkerchief is to function. It has no say. I picked it from the drawer, I brought it here so that I can use it to wipe my face because I own it. So I have the right to move it from where it was to this new position so that it can fulfill purpose. Hallelujah. So likewise, you and I are God's, uh, God formed us for himself. We are his properties. Therefore, God has the prerogative right to be able to deploy us, to deploy you, to deploy me where he, where he, where he senses or where he sights need of workforce. Hallelujah. I want us to read the book of Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. The Bible says in Ezekiel 22 verse 30, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the age and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. He said, but I found not. If you read this verse of scripture, you will discover that there is need for workforce here. He said, I search for a man. I look for a man, I look for a woman, I look for a sister, I look for a brother that will stand in the gap and that will make up the age. He said, I found none. I want to read the New Living Translation. He said, I looked for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. I search for someone to stand in the gap in the world so I wouldn't have to destroy the land but I found none let me read the message translation I looked for someone to stand up for me against all this to repair the defenses of the city to take the stand for me and stand in the gap to protect this land so I wouldn't have to destroy it he said I couldn't find anyone Hallelujah. God will find you tonight. God is finding you and I tonight. Can I hear a louder amen? There is need for workforce here. He said, I look for someone that will stand up for me. Listen to me. It is easy for everyone to stand up for himself. When it is about you, you can easily stand up. But for those that will stand up for God, he said, I look for them and I found not. I look for those that will stand up for me and keep alert. Those that will rebuild the broken world, he said, I found not. You know what? The only ones available are those that are standing up for themselves. Those that have become supervisors in the kingdom of God. Those that are looking around and condemning other people, saying, look at her hair. Her hair do is not well done. He said, look at her. How many years has she been married? Look at her. She's not even pregnant. Look at her children. That is not what God is looking for. But you will agree with me that those are the... Those are the common people that are available in the vineyard. 
God saw a need here. He said, I'm looking for those that will stand up for me. Hallelujah. I am glad to let you know that you happen and you qualify to be among those that will be standing up for God tonight. I want you to tell yourself that, Lord, I am standing up for you tonight. You have stood for yourself over and over. Tonight is time for you to stand up for God. To stand up for God. Look at it here. There is need for workforce in this place. And because of the aforementioned need, we saw a deployment of workforce that took place in the book of Isaiah chapter 62. I am rushing so fast tonight so that we can really go into the session of prayer. Because of the need in Ezekiel 22, we saw a major deployment of workforce in the book of Isaiah chapter 62 from verse 6 to 7. The Bible says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep no silence and give him no rest till he... 22, 22, sorry. He said, I look for a man that will stand up for me. By virtue of this need, a major deployment of workforce was carried out in the book of Isaiah chapter 62 and verse number 6. He said, I have set watchmen, I have fixed them there. There is a difference between what you put and what you fix. The scripture says, God fix watchmen. And you will agree with me, among other things, one of the major requirements of watchmen is to stay alert. One of the major requirements of watchmen is to keep awake. In the ancient days, watchmen were kept on the towers to keep watch over the cities and in case they, they, in case they sight any threat of danger, there was an alarm. There was an alarm from them so that they can prepare the city dwellers to be able to lock the gate of the city against perpetrators of evil and begin to prepare for war. We look at the book of Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17. God set Ezekiel as a watchman over the house of Israel. What was Ezekiel doing? Ezekiel was basically the watchman over the house of Israel, giving directives as received from God, watching over the activities to make sure they live right as expected of God, to make sure they were righteous. Praise the Lord. But in Isaiah chapter 62, we see a group of people that have been deployed, a group of people that have been given a role, a group of people that have been given a charge to keep a prayer vigil. He said, I have set watchmen that will not keep silent day nor night. A group of people that have been given an assignment, that have been given a detailed description of the assignment. A group of men and women that are to keep a prayer vigil night, day and night. A group of people that will not keep silence. A group of people that will not give God rest until he makes Jerusalem a place on the earth until he makes Jerusalem. I want us to replace that Jerusalem with our families. A group of people that God have deployed on our side that until or we will not give him rest until he makes our children, until he makes our families, until he makes our nations and our leaders a place on the earth. Praise the Lord. Let me quickly read the same verse of scripture in the message translation, Isaiah 62, verse 6 to 7. He said, I have posted watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem. Day and night, they keep at it, praying, calling out, reminding God to remember. Hallelujah. I want to let you know that you and I have been deployed to keep at it what are we to keep at to keep alert to stay awake to 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 to, to stay
stay alert, keeping a vigil day and night. What are we doing? Reminding God to remember. Reminding God to remember. They are to give him no peace until he does what he said, until he makes Jerusalem famous as the city of grace until he does what he said concerning your children until he does what he said concerning your home until he does what he said concerning your ministry until he does what he said concerning your business and the nations of the earth the bible says call out and reminding god give him no peace until he does what he has said hallelujah so by this understanding you and i have a prayer role you and i happen to be among those that will stand up for god you are not standing up for yourself i'm talking about you and i standing up for god and giving god no rest until that precious daughter testifies that finally i am pregnant giving god because those are the things he promised hallelujah so we are privileged we happen to be among those that are to stand up for god we happen to be among those that will stay awake praying to keep the ravaging effect of evil away especially in the current global because of the current global pandemic praise the lord you happen to be among those that will stay awake so that the second coming of the lord jesus christ does not take the body of christ I'm aware. So you happen to be among those that will stay awake to be praying for revival. Praise the Lord. You happen to be among those that will stay awake and hold fast the profession of your faith as stated in the book of Hebrew chapter 10 and verse 23. To hold fast the profession of your faith, not allowing it to waver by the winds of life. You happen to be among those that will stay awake to fulfill destiny like Deborah. The Bible says in Judges chapter 5 verse 7, the inhabitants of the villages ceased, certain activities ceased, but one woman that stayed awake, one woman that was alert, the Bible says, until Deborah arose. You don't arose, you don't arise when you're sleeping. People who rise up are those that are awake. People who rise up are those that are alert. So you are among those that are privileged to stay alert, to stay awake for the purpose of the fulfillment of destiny. To stay awake, calling those things, reminding God to remember. Reminding God to remember. Reminding God to remember that certain things ought not to be so. Reminding God to, be, to remember. Reminding God to remember over those issues that have made you a byword and a proverb. Reminding God to remember. That is what we are set to do tonight reminding God to remember, calling God and putting God in remembrance, remembrance concerning the marital destinies of your children, reminding God to remember concerning that supernatural conception, reminding God to remember concerning your business, especially in the current state that the entire world is in, reminding God to remember, remember Reminding God to remember. Reminding God to remember. Hallelujah. He said, don't hold your peace until God makes Jerusalem a praise, a fame, not in heaven, but here on earth. I believe God with you that after tonight's travail of Hannah, something spectacular will be back in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Anytime you remind God to remember the unusual must happen. When God remembered Noah in Genesis chapter 8, I'm sure you still remember what happened. Anytime you remind God to remember, God rises up in his capacity. He does not send an angel. He rises in his capacity to make sure what needs to be fixed in your life is fixed. To make sure what needs to be fixed in your family is fixed. To make sure what needs to be fixed in the nation is fixed. Remember I said something, that in the ancient days, watchmen were set on towers. They were awake. What were they doing? They were keeping vigil. So in case there is any threat, then they alert the city dwellers. Staying alert at the position or at the place of assignment that God has redeployed us to or has deployed us to is to sense and look around and tell God what I'm seeing, the activities I'm seeing ought not to be so. Reminding God to remember, reminding God to remember. We will be going straight away into the session of prayer. Reminding God to remember. What has God said concerning the nations of the earth? This is a night that you and I will be reminding him to remember. What has God said concerning your health? This is the night to remind God to remember. What has God said concerning the works of your hands? He said, I have deployed you. I have set you as a prayer champion. I don't want to use the word a prayer warrior. As a prayer champion that will stay alert, that will be awake, that will not keep silence that will remind me to remember and effect what I have promised. I am sure you are set for that prayer with me. I want you to just lift up your hands tonight that what a privilege you and I have been deployed. We have been deployed. We have been deployed. We are privileged to be among those that God have deployed, that God have deployed to keep watch, to keep video, to put him in remembrance. What a privilege. You are among those that are standing up for God. He said, I look for those that will stand up. That will stand up on my behalf. That will rebuild. I want you to go ahead and ask the Lord. And, and tell God, Lord, what a privilege. I count it a great privilege. I count it a real privilege. To be among those that you have deployed. To be among your workforce. That will keep vigil day and night. Because there is a God that neither sleeps nor slumber. What a privilege. What a privilege. What a privilege. Raka second tala brodo shikata. Go ahead and begin to welcome the spirit of grace and intercession. Lord, the great spirit of grace and intercession. Spirit of grace and intercession. To be able to know what to say. Grant me utterance tonight. Father, grant each and every one of us utterance. We ask for the spirit of grace and intercession. Baptize me tonight with the spirit of grace and intercession. Father, baptize me tonight. Baptize everyone that is connected tonight with the spirit of grace and intercession. Thank you, faithful Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. He said, those that will not keep silent, those that will be reminding God to remember, to remind God to remember his promises concerning our lives, his promises concerning the entire world. What has God said concerning the nations of the earth? Let me quickly read the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins 
and I will heal their land. That is what God said concerning the nations of the earth. He said we should remind him to remember this. So what are we doing tonight? We'll be going ahead to say, oh Lord, we humble ourselves to seek your face in prayer tonight. We humble ourselves to seek your face in prayer tonight. He said, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, prayer demands humility. Go ahead and begin to tell the Lord, I humble myself tonight. I humble myself tonight. I humble myself to seek your face in prayer. I humble myself to seek your face in prayer. Oh Lord, we plead for your mercy. Forgive our sins. Forgive our sins. Heal our land and heal the earth. Heal our land and heal the earth. That is what the scripture says. He says we will humble ourselves and will cry out for God. He says he will hear us and he will heal our land. Oh Lord, we plead for your mercy over the nations of the earth. Heal our land. Forgive our sins and heal the earth. Forgive our sins. Heal the nations of the earth, oh God, from the current global pandemic, COVID-19. Oh God, heal the nations of the earth. Remember, the watchmen are men and women that will not keep silent. Make sure you are saying something. He said we should not keep silence until... Jerusalem becomes a righteousness until Jerusalem becomes a praise on the earth. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we plead for mercy. Forgive our sins and heal our lands. Heal the nations of the earth. Heal the nations of the earth. Heal the nations of the earth. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Lord, the current global pandemic, we ask, oh God, stay the hand of the enemy. Stay the hand of the enemy over the nations of the earth. Thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we have prayed in the book of 2nd Kings chapter 3 and verse 17 the Bible says for those say the Lord ye shall not see wind neither shall ye see rain he said yet the valleys shall be filled with water that ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beasts will be saying oh Lord fill up every valley created in families as a result of the current global pandemic Oh God, filled up every valley, filled up every valley, every valley that has been created in families as a result of the current global pandemic. Father, fill up such valley, filled up financial valley, every valley that has been created because of the current global pandemic. Father, fill them up by your power. Fill them up. Fill them up, oh God. Fill them up, oh God. Fill them up, oh God. Father, you have what it takes to fill every valley. Father, when the valleys are filled in families, families becomes praises on the earth. Filled up every valley, every valley, every valley in our homes, valleys in our families, valleys, oh God, in families as a result of the current global pandemic. Father, filled up every valley. La tuzikata mabrandu jaye kadala every valley father fill it up father fill it up father fill it up in the name of Jesus Christ Lord fill it up every valley every valley financial valley fill it up health valley kalabu shika tala kruduziga bale kotoziga yagadagaba thank you Father we'll be praying for the sick in the book of Third John chapter one verse two he said. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. The desire of God is to see us enjoy good health. That is the desire of God because he paid for it. We'll be saying, Father, let the desire, let this desire bring healing to as many that are down in affliction. The desire of God is to see us healthy because he paid for it. We are going to ask the Lord, let this desire bring health to as many that are down because of any form of affliction. Father, let that desire bring healing. Let that desire bring healing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, oh God, let the desire you have to see 
us healthy, bring health, bring healing to as many that are down. Lord, the desire to see us healthy, let it bring health, let it bring healing to as many that are down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let the desire, the desire to see us healthy, Father, let it bring healing to as many that are down, to as many that are down. Psalms 107 verse 20, the Bible says, He sent His word, He healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Oh Lord, let your word bring healing to the sick. Let your word bring healing to the sick. Distance is not a barrier. We send forth the word of God to many quarantine centers. Let your word bring healing to as many that are right now in isolation as a result of COVID-19. We send your word, oh God. We send your word. Others that are down because of other affliction, diabetic, those that are diabetic, Bradu Shakata Yegede Father, we send your word. We send your word. The Bible says you send your word. It healed them and deliver them from their destruction. Whatever kind of affliction, if it has a name, the name of Jesus is above every other name. We send forth the name of Jesus to the afflicted. We declare their healing. We declare their healing. We declare their healing. In the name of Jesus, we take back their health that was stolen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we command the restoration of their health that was stolen. The restoration of their health that has been stolen. We command the restoration of their health because the Bible tells us he himself took our infirmity. Infirmity was taken so that we can be healthy today. If there is an affliction, that means the health that God paid for was stolen. Therefore, we command by tonight's prayer, we take back their health. We take back their health. We take back their health in the name of Jesus Christ. We take back their health. We take back their health. We take it back. We take it back. We take it back. We take it back. It doesn't matter the name of that affliction. You are coming out tonight. You are coming out tonight. We are coming out tonight. You are coming out tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. You are coming out tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We'll be going ahead to pray for fruitfulness fruitfulness in the book of Psalms 119 verse 22 the Bible says remove from me reproach and contempt for I have kept thy testimonies remove from me reproach and contempt if you have never experienced delay in conception you won't understand this many years ago about 25 years ago I remember 26 or 27, yeah, 25 years ago, I was believing God for the fruit of the womb. As soon as I got married, I remember one day as a minister's wife, we had gone for a meeting somewhere. And by the faith that I was professing, I wore a maternity gown. And all of a sudden, another elder walked towards me. While she was hanging me, she decided to press my stomach to check whether truly I was pregnant or it was just a maternity. What a reproach. I didn't hear anything in that meeting that day. I was low in my spirit. It was a mockery. But here I stand today. God rolled that reproach of barrenness. Today I'm a joyful mother of four children. He said, roll away reproach and content. I want us to connect our faiths together as we pray for those that are believing God for the fruit of the womb. That, oh Lord, roll away the reproach of barrenness from anyone that is called barren. That is not the name that God gave them. It is a reproach. And the Bible says, God will, God will rolls reproach away. God specializes in rolling reproaches away. I stand in agreement with you tonight, wherever you are watching from, to the glory of God. If there is any testimony that God has ever wrought over and over in our lives, is testimonies of supernatural conception in the lives of those that are called barren. I stand tonight by that grace that is upon my life, I declare you fruitful in the name of Jesus. God that rolled away the reproach of barrenness in my life. I decree to as many that are believing God for the fruit of the womb. That reproach is rolled away forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We roll away the reproach of barrenness. In Genesis 1.28, the Bible says, and God blessed them. 
And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. By the blood of Jesus, we pull down any anti-fruitfulness altar that has been raised against such destinies. We pull down every anti-fruitfulness altars that men have raised diabolically against your conception. By this prayer tonight, we are raising a new altar. We are raising a new altar. A new voice will be speaking over your life. A voice of conception. A voice of conception. A voice of supernatural conception. We pull down every anti-fruitfulness testimony. Every anti-fruitfulness altar that have been raised against you. The Bible says God declare. God formed them. And God declare that go and be fruitful. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pull down every anti-fruitfulness altar. We pull down in the name of Jesus. We pull it down. We pull it down. Fallopian troops, hear ye the word of the Lord. Every form of blockage, hear ye the word of the Lord. Low spam count, hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Touch that womb right now. Everything that is not in order by the power that is in the name of Jesus. I can see an invisible hand fixing that womb. Fixing that womb where your baby is meant to lay in the name of Jesus. There is an invisible hand right now fixing what needs to be fixed in that womb. An invisible hand correcting what needs to be corrected in the name of Jesus. The hand of God is at work right now. Reguza Brudujigidia Bazugida Matushi Brada Zigi Gadishi Bruduzu Maga Yegidi Bruduza Gaye Gadushi Bradu Ziga Yekete Rutuziza Bashi Gididizi Maruduziga Mashe Kete Rigudu Zakete Brudushi Kata because God is right now at work in your life in the next nine months you will be dancing to testify of the goodness of God in your life you will carry your baby you are carrying your baby already you are carrying your baby already in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray for singles eligible singles eligible singles eligible in the book of Lamentation, chapter 2, from verse 15 to 16, the Bible says, And all that pass by clap their hands. I always tell people, there are two types of clapping. When people begin to clap for you like this, it means you have done well. But in Africa, when people begin to clap like this, and they bring their head like this, that means something is wrong. I'm sure this is the type of clap that this scripture is talking about. He says, all that pass by, they clap their hands. As they clap their hands, their head is moving in the same direction. They hiss and they wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? They are wagging their tongue, turning their head, clapping their hands. Verse 16 says, All thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee, they hiss and they gnash the teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up, God forbid. He says, certainly, this is the day that we looked for. We have found, we have seen it. That is not your portion. We are praying specifically for the single eligibles. We are saying by the blood of Jesus, we command the enemy to vomit their marital destiny. Any snake that have swallowed their marital destiny, we command you in the name of Jesus to vomit their marital destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. He said the enemy has opened his mouth against thee. We are opening our mouth tonight against the enemy that have opened his mouth against the marital destiny 
of the single eligible in the name of Jesus we command the enemy we open the mouth of the enemy in the name of Jesus we open it by the blood of Jesus we command the enemy to vomit the marital destinies that has been swallowed we command the enemy to vomit marital destinies that have been swallowed. The Bible says in Job chapter 20 and verse 15, he has swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them again. Anytime we read this scripture, we always talk about wealth, the money and all that. But the Holy Ghost gave me a deeper understanding. One of the riches that the devil have swallowed is marital destiny. You know the wealth that happens when a man and a woman find themselves and they eventually marry. You know the children they will give birth to what they will become. You know the nations of the earth that will be affected by him. One of the wealth that the devil have swallowed is marital destiny. The Bible says, God shall cast them out of his belly. Join me tonight as we begin to cast out marital destinies of single eligibles out of the belly of the enemy. Out of the belly of the enemy. Let's begin to cast them out. Let's begin to cast them out in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to cast them out. Marital destinies of single eligibles. We cast them out. We cast out. We cast them out from the belly of the devil. We box him. Our prayer becomes a boxing gloves. Box it out in the name of Jesus. Marital destinies of precious daughters and precious sons. Oh God, we box it out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ let this season their season we remove every demonic covering we remove every demonic covering you can imagine when a lady is seen in the eyes of another man as a man those are demonic covering those are demonic covering the Bible says on this mountain the Lord will remove it we remove every demonic covering over such destinies over such destinies over such destinies father make them conspicuously visible make them conspicuously visible to their own partners make them conspicuously visible in the mighty name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus we tear down every covering we tear down every covering thank you father we'll be going ahead <laughs> you know there are prayers you tell God that Lord if only you can do this for me if only you can do this for me and I know this night is one of such prayers God is doing it for you and he will give you an occasion to return and testify to the glory of his name we'll be praying for head of families in Proverbs 31 verse 23 the Bible says her husband is known in the gates when he sits among elders of the land she will not be known as a liability. She will be known as a responsible husband, as a responsible father to his children, as a responsible leader. Go ahead and begin to pray. My husband shall be known as a responsible husband. My husband shall be known as a responsible father. My husband shall be known as a responsible leader. He will not be a liability. The Bible says he will be known at the gates of the city. When he sits among elders, he will be identified by virtue of the responsibility roles that he plays. He will not be known as a liability in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My husband will not be known as a liability. My husband will be known as a responsible husband, as a responsible leader, as a responsible father to our children in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We will not close tonight without praying for our children. What you deposit on a prayer altar in a time like this, especially when it comes, uh, when, it, when it has to do with our children, what we deposit on the prayer altar is what keeps speaking over the destinies of our children. If there is nothing you are depositing on the prayer altar concerning the destinies of your children, your children will journey into their destinies voiceless, but that will not be their portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Genesis chapter 30 and verse 14, the Bible says, And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest, and he found mandrakes. It was the day of wheat harvest, but Reuben found mandrakes in the field, and he brought it unto his mother, who be saying, Lord, as my children step out, let them find favor. 
what others are struggling to find lord bring it their way with ease bring it their way with ease let's go ahead and pray bring it their way with ease in the name of jesus as my children step out oh god they will not struggle they will not tarmac to and fro the bible says reuben found mandrakes but remember it was the day it was the days of harvest of wheat but reuben found mandrakes favor will not be far away from my children as they step out let them find favor let them find favor as they step out let them succeed they will not return as vagabonds our children will not return as failures they will not return as a concern in the name of jesus they will return successful they will return successful in the mighty name of jesus exodus chapter 2 verse 16 to 17 exodus chapter 2 verse 16 to 17 he said now the priest of midian had seven daughters and they came and drew water and filled their troughs to water their father's flock verse 17 and the shepherd came and drove them away but moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock lord rest strategic destiny helper for our daughters let's begin to ask the lord they will not meet with destiny vandalizers oh lord Rest strategic destiny helpers for my daughters in the name of jesus as they go about pursuing righteous cause, let them meet with their Moses that will rise up for them. Let them meet with their Moses that will rise up for their help. In the name of Jesus, let them meet with their Moses that will rise up for them. Oh Lord, connect my daughters with their strategic destiny helpers and deliver them as you connect them to their destiny helpers. Deliver them from destiny vandalizers. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. They will not meet with destiny vandalizers. They will meet with their destiny helpers. I want you to go ahead and begin to speak a word over your life. Maybe there is something that is of great concern to you. The Bible says, the Lord is the one that perfects all our concerns. Why not go ahead and mention that thing in one minute? The Lord, I came tonight with this issue. I didn't mention it perhaps god knows that that issue is there in one minute talk to him that lord this is an issue of concern when hannah went to shiloh one of the issue of concern that anna went with with shiloh was the issue of barrenness and the bible says when hannah left shiloh hannah left with a change of countenance i don't know what that issue is if you can present it to god tonight i assure you you're leaving travel of hannah tonight with a change of countenance with a change of containers we serve a god that is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than what we think more than what we could imagine oh lord god that does wondrous things god that does wondrous things i give you glory god that does wondrous things god that does wondrous things lift your voice and begin to give him glory god that does wondrous things has had us tonight god that does wondrous things oh father we give you glory we exalt your name. Let's give him praise and honor. Let's give him adoration. What a faithful God we serve. What a faithful God we serve. We have reminded him to remember. We have reminded him to remember. That means our families will become a praise on the earth. That means our children will become a praise on the earth. That means our husbands will become a praise on the earth. That means our nation will become a praise on the earth. We have reminded him to remember. And I am sure tonight God has put on his apron. He is already in his workshop effecting the changes that need to be effected. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we glorify your name. You alone are worthy of praise. You alone are worthy of our worship. We give you praise, O oh God. We exalt you. Thank you, Father. In case you are not born again, I would like to pray for you tonight. Very fast, I want you to repeat after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight. I am a sinner. I know you died for me. Lord, wash me from sin. 
change my garment of sin with the garment of righteousness. I acknowledge you and I receive you tonight as my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for it is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. I congratulate you in case you are there and you repeated this prayer after me. I welcome you to the kingdom of God. I welcome you to the kingdom of his dear son. Locate any vibrant church. Right now, I know we are under lockdown. Whichever church that God leads you to, get connected. And I believe God with you that as you embark on this journey, you will be established in salvation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And for all that connected tonight, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord give you your desired testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Do not forget, the Bible tells us that we should not appear before the Lord empty. What a night to lay down our sacrifices, our offerings on this altar that we have we have raised tonight on this altar of prayer. Our pay bill number is 140019. 140019. And to every one of you that have given your offering out there, I pray for you that God of sudden surprises, God of sudden intervention will step in for you over that financial situation in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not see lack. You will not be left empty in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Quickly listen to the following announcement before we share uh, our goodness in fellowship tonight. The Travel of Hannah online meeting will now hold twice in a month. Twice in a month. That is the second Saturday of every month and the last Saturday of every month. This means our next meeting will be on the 13th of June and then 27th of June. Remember, this is a meeting we used to hold almost five hours in one day. So we are trying to see how we can still utilize two Saturdays in a month and still be able to have a fruitful time of prayer. May the Lord bless you. I love you. The Lord keep you. Please stay safe. Amen. Bye.